fellow Toastmasters and our most welcome guests. Welcome to the District 47 Table Topic Speech Contest. The purpose of the Table Topic Speech Contest is to provide an opportunity to learn by observing the more proficient speakers who have benefited from their Toastmasters training and to recognize the best as encouragement to all. The contestants have drawn their speaking orders. The, their speaking positions are as follow. Contestant number one, Florence Stewart. Contestant number two, Chanel Williams. Contestant number three, Cameron Reckley. Contestant number four, Anne Finley Stockmeyer. Contestant number five, Judy Joffe. Contestant number six, Sherelle McCoy. Contestant number seven, Michelle Ferris. The order again, Florence Stewart, Chanel Williams, Cameron Reckley, Anne Finley Stockmeyer, Judy Joffe, Sherelle McCoy, and Michelle Ferris. Contestant number one, Florence Stewart. When the clock strikes 12, when the clock strikes 12, Florence Stewart. Good morning, Madam Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters and guests. When the clock strikes 12, Toastmasters, what that means for me, half the day is over. But guess what? It's only time. So what is this thing called time? Toastmasters, I remember long, long ago, I was about seven years of age. And then I realized I wanted to be 10. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. Then I got to be 10. And then, oh, <laughs> I needed to be <laughs> sweet 16. Oh my gosh. Wow. And then I was sweet 16. Oh my God, I need to be 18. Oh, 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 oh. Well, 18. I realized I had to wait till I was 21. Oh, and then, yes, 21 came. Oh, I was happy. 21. I realized this thing called bills started coming in my mailbox. I had bills to pay. Toasties. And guess time went on, and before I knew it, I was 35, and then I was the big one, 5-0. 5-0? I remember when my mom and her friends were 5-0. They were old, but I was 50. I was not old. Then finally, I became 6-0. Besides all the perks of being a senior citizen, those masters, I realized there was no more time to waste. You see, the clock had ticked from so-called 7 and now I was 6-0. Then last year, the big light bulb came on. I was 67, and I started something that I wanted to do. Learn to play the piano. Toastmasters and guests, it has been almost a year, and I am playing the piano. Time, time is only how you live your life. Back to you. Contestant number two, Chanel Williams. When the clock strikes 12, when the clock strikes 12, Chanel Williams. Let's go home. Oh my gosh, it's midnight and I have not made it to where I need to be. Good evening, Chief Judge, Contest Master, fellow Toastmasters and guests. How many of you have experienced a moment where the clock strikes 12 and you are not in position. Where's my shoe? Oh my gosh, where's my car? I need to get home. You're not prepared. The clock has struck 12 
and all of the plans that you thought you had are falling to pieces. Guess what? That's when you pivot. You pivot to plan B or plan C and you keep going. Yes, Cinderella dropped her shoe. Yes, I may not have been in position for certain moments of my life, but I pivoted and moved to plan B. And guess what? Because Cinderella dropped that glass slipper, she found the man of her dreams. Because I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, I ended up meeting somebody. I ended up having a unique conversation, landing that next job. Guess what? The clock may strike 12 and you may not be where you think you should be, but move forward anyway. Continue to move forward, pivot, and you will be so surprised as to where you end up. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, that clock may strike 12. You may not think you are where you are supposed to be. You may not think that your plans are going the way they should, but if you remember to pivot, believe in yourself, and make the most out of any situation, you will have that happy ending. You will be able to say that my plan C ended up being better than my plan B or my plan A. Even if that clock strikes 12, remember the power of your pivot. Madam Chair. Contestant number three, Cameron Reckley. When the clock strikes 12, when the clock strikes 12, Cameron Reckley. When the clock strikes 12, this reminds me of my first Toastmasters meeting. I was there, felt all alone, cold, shivering, and someone asked me a question. He said, hey, you, are you a guest? I said, yes. They said, okay, when this meeting starts, we're gonna want you to speak. I said, what? How? Why? He said, don't worry. It's just like the clock striking 12 and it's your time to go. So I was there shaking, basically afraid to do the impossible, afraid to speak at an impromptu meeting. Afraid to let my voice be heard. Afraid to cancel out all the noise. But the minute that clock strike 12, I knew it was either sink or swim. I knew it was time for me to step to the plate and begin my Toastmasters journey. Yes, fellow Toastmasters, July 15, 2016 is when the clock struck 12 to me. I stood up on that Toastmasters podium and I said, good evening, everyone. My name is Kemal Rackley and I aspire to be a Toastmaster. The crowd looked at me, some stared, some tried to figure out, but what is this young man doing? But fellow Toastmasters, at that very moment, at that point, I knew that I'm in this for the long haul. And years later, I am now in the Table Topics Contest. Could you imagine? Could you believe that a young boy at the age of 22 stood up in his first Toastmasters meeting when the clock struck at 12? For the Toastmasters, yes, I am now Toastmaster Cameron Rackley, I aspire to be a future DTM. Mr. Chairman.
Contestant number four, Anne Finley Stockmeyer. When the clock strikes 12. When the clock strikes 12. Anne Finley Stockmeyer. When the clock strikes 12. It's an interesting prompt, and it begs one to think, well, what does that mean when the clock strikes 12? Is it the end of the day, the end of the week, the end of our life? When the clock strikes 12, what will we have to say for our life? Jeff Bezos lives by, lives by this, um, I guess, this kind of methodology where he imagines himself where he's 80 years old, looking back on his life. And if he has any regrets when he goes through this practice, he immediately does what he can to squash that regret so that it doesn't become a regret when he's 80 years old. I think if we constantly ask ourselves, what happens when the clock strikes 12? Will I be able to say that I put everything I could into my relationships? Will I be able to say that I put everything I could into my friendships, my career, myself, you know, what does it actually look like when the clock strikes 12, all of us will have a different perspective on life. And we'll be able to look back at things that we loved the highs in life, the lows in life, the average days in life, the entire aggregate of it. So what I would encourage so that you don't live a life full of regret and you live a life that's full of happiness, joys, super high highs, great love, abundance is to constantly ask yourself if right now were the moment where the clock strikes 12, would I be happy or would I, would I have any regrets? And if you do have regrets, then do what you can to change that so that when the clock strikes 12, You'll be set in stone and very happy looking back on your life. Thank you. Contestant number five, Judy Jaffe. When the st clock strikes 12, when the clock strikes 12, Judy Jaffe. When the clock strikes 12, that's time to stop and look around. Toastmasters, friends, dignitaries, and honorable judges. The 12 is a magical number. It signals day and it signals light. So that is a time, whether it's day or night, that we need to stop and contemplate just where we want to be in life. You see, I've always looked in simplified terms that life is like a stoplight. Green, you go full force. That's one o'clock. Maybe then you hit a yellow light. You slow down and you start to look around. That's halfway through your day, six or seven or eight. And then you get that red light. You know it's time to stop. Stop and look around. Take that moment to inner reflect. We're always running around. Too crazy. But we need to know that the day only has 24 hours and we can only accomplish so much. So let's pick those times when we go green in full force, and then we do our yellow, we mellow out, and then red. We stop, we contemplate, we look right, we look left, and decide the best direction to go forward. When the clock strikes 12, that's time to stop and think. Back to you, Contest Master.
Contestant number six, Sherelle McCoy. When the clock strikes 12, when the clock strikes 12, Sherelle McCoy. Contest chair, fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests. When the clock strikes 12, where would you be? For me, I'd probably be awake. I am such a night owl. I believe that some of the most interesting and wonderful and actually exciting things happen at night. But there's a downside to that. Everyone else is asleep. So when the clock strikes 12, I'm active. I'm up. I'm probably reading and I may be drawing. But there's a downside to this. If I'm awake when the clock strikes 12, that means I'm gonna be a little bit tired by the time the clock strikes six. You definitely have to prioritize your time in life. And that's something I'm trying to get better at doing. So maybe tonight when the clock strikes 12, I'll already be in bed. Contest chair. Contestant number seven, Michelle Ferris. When the clock strikes 12, when the clock strikes 12, Michelle Ferris. Thank you for that question, Madam Table Topics, Chair, Judges, Distinguished Guests. It is truly my honor to be here today. When the clock strikes 12, I have to be home. I can't wait to find my missing slipper. I have to find my carriage. Never mind the prince. Never mind the little mice that helped me get my dress together. All I want to do is get in my carriage and get home so that I can get into my nice, warm, snuggly bed. I'm going to get on my fuzziest pajamas. My face will be washed. My teeth will be brushed. And I'm going to slip inside my dreams. What are my dreams? I dream about my family, my loved ones, my parents, especially my children, my job, all the things in my life that I love, my dogs. And I don't wake up until morning because when this clock strikes 12, I am clocked out for the day. My sleepy slumber is my happy place. I love it. And when the clock strikes 12, nothing else matters. My cool, calm slumber envelops me. Can you picture it? Am I making you sleepy? When the clock strikes 12, I challenge you to get into your sleepy slumber and your best fuzziest jammies with your face washed and your teeth brushed and not worrying about any prince or princess or carriage or mice or anything. Have a wonderful slumber. That's my challenge to you. Thank you so much for the question. On behalf of the entire contest team and all of the contestants, thank you for joining us. And we certainly hope that you've enjoyed this contest.